I've learned a lot over the four decades of health and fitness and being in the trenches with the greatest in the world. And one of those things I've learned a lot more about and how to build better muscle is nutrition and how it has changed over the decades. And that's why I have the Titan meal plan for you guys out there that are confused about nutrition. I'm going to set you straight. Get a hold of me today. The link will be in the comments down below for you guys. Everybody, get over to the Titan Meal Plan, and I'll see you in the Titan Crew, where I will fine-tune any difficulties that you're having. Welcome to the Mike O'Hearn Show, right here on Generation Iron. And again, this is something uh, that I'm so excited about, because I get to bring on today someone who has been so successful in their life on uh, one aspect and, and kept that passion alive for what he was doing and being able to have a, a friend like that and watch that, that kind of pushes me a bit. And today's show, I think if you pay attention to this, it will teach you about true passion um, and not money, fame, um, the glory. It will teach you really what it takes to get to that, that level and how to I mean, live a fulfillment life with all the struggles that come into play. Because for me, I, I've never really met anybody that's gone through life without any kind of struggles or somebody successful that really puts themselves out there. I'll put it that way. Someone that tries to make their dreams come true goes through hardships. And I think uh, that's touching to me and, and it's cool. And it's a, it's a hero's performance. It's like the Rocky, you know. It wasn't about the boxing. It was about the struggles he went through to become who he was. Um, so today I got back on the show, Jonathan Sheck, who is, again, a dear friend and, and, and a true motivation to me. Um, and then we got to film. We got so much to go over. So let's bring the stud on right now on the Michael Hearn Show. Hey, stud muffin. What's, what's going on? What a <laughs> weekend, man. What a weekend. So kind of tell everybody, before you go to this, before you tell them what happened over the weekend, champion, um, please, will you tell us how this even came into your mind to do at your um, experienced age as of now? So how did, how did this come about? We were, we were uh, shooting a television series called Blue Ridge. And Michael came out. He was a uh, he's a big part of the series, and we were just chatting it up, just talking about life. Um, and I just kept thinking to myself, like I remember going to Gold's Gym when I was 19 years old in Venice, California, and meeting you, and started talking to you, and you know having this length of time, and to see where you've come. See, I, I think you, I, I knew you before you became. Before you competed, no, no, I started before that. You just you're so humble. You, you didn't worry about that. You liked the person, not the not the career. Well, I knew you were you're plastered all over muscle and fitness. You know that was the, you were the go to guy that they put on muscle and fitness during that time, right? I'm, I'm like like you had like like 25 covers or something. Um, and you you know you were the, the kindest, the the nicest back then and, and I kept thinking to myself like I I always was into my physique I thought that was I, I literally thought I was gonna be like play Wolverine or like before they even were making any of those movies and I thought it was gonna be it was me my body like a, an athletic approach to my career and and acting and that was how I was gonna be it you know make my make my way I'm gonna throw up a collage of photos of you, of, of, of you and me as those little young teenagers in Gold's Venice, because when, I don't care, uh, all the fans watching this show, this guy was the pinnacle of what a guy would want to be. Uh, his body, his face, his attitude. Um, one thing that always impressed me about you is I don't think you've ever realized what a stud you were in life. You were so humble and so kind, and you were never the guy going, hey, I, I'm, the, I'm the cover model. I'm the best looking guy here, even though you were. And it's like you were so, I'm just one of the guys I'm putting in the work. And so I just, that's a prop to you at that young age. I thought that was the most like, 
I'm sitting there next to you going, this guy doesn't even know how he, everybody's looking at you straight guys, all the girls, everybody's looking at you going, God dang, I, I wish I could be him. So I have to put that up there. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was, that was, well, still to this day and, and being on that stage, I didn't, I kept looking at it. I was like, what am I doing here, Mike? I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I still feel like a, a humility, a humble, humbleness to me. So we're day. doing the we're doing the TV your your TV show. Yeah, Let's be clear TV about show. this. The Blue Ridge is Jonathan's new TV show that will be out, and I'm so excited to be part of this. But uh, and I got that. I got to I got to get that hat. I got to put that on for this. You got one. I got one. Okay. <laughs> Gary sent me one. So this new show is great, and we were on set, and we got to hang out, and you got to do something. You've been in the business a long time, but you got to do something where you got to pick and choose or at least help pick and choose the cast. Yeah. That was I mean, uh, talk about that for a second. So before we get into your weekend, I know we got a lot to cover, but I, there's, I don't want them to miss this. Cause I, right. cause there's so much to it. Go on. Tell us about the show. So I did a, a TV move. I'll, I'll, I'll go back. I moved to Nashville, Tennessee. I left all my representation. I left Hollywood behind and I said, I'm going to start anew. And I called, Five of my friends. And I said, listen, I don't have an agent. I don't have a manager. I don't, I'm, I want to continue acting, but I want to find my way. And one of them, Nick Gonzalez, set me up with a producer named Gary Wheeler. He said, he's an incredible guy. You're going to love him. His crew is awesome. And they make these movies, and they're really good movies. And I think he would love you. And Gary calls me up and says, Jonathan, I have this movie. I think you'd be perfect for it. It's about a guy who leaves California and moves to a small Southern town to be with his family. <laughs> he becomes the sheriff in the small town and something happens in the town. He has to solve the crime. And it was called Blue Ridge. And it was a movie that we shot for INSP. Um, it premiered on the, it premiered on INSP and then it went to Peacock, Amazon prime. And it did incredibly well, so well that, Gary brought up to the network that they wanted to make it, would they make it into a television series? And when they came back to me, I said, I would love to do that. I would love to be Justin Wise in, in a TV series. I think it'd make a great series, but I really like to be part of the whole process. I've been doing this for such a long time. I really can, I think I can really help. And uh, so I became EP executive producer on it. So when, when casting came to each one of the, you know, the, the episodes, I had a, I had to say in my first the first home run that I got was you. <laughs> I was just like, okay, this role, Mike, can, he's perfect for it. He just got off the sh it got off nine one nine one one. It was a it was a hook. He's he's got this movie coming out in Sundance, and they were like, oh yeah, great. I mean, you, and they just like offered you the role, right? Yeah. Well, it, it it took about three weeks for them to offer you the role just because they were behind. But yeah. That's how it worked. It's that That's easy. how it worked. And and you guys can see uh, the movie Blue Ridge plus on Amazon. But you, Jonathan's in tons of movies. Um, do your research. Uh, check out the 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 length of the career and as he grew. Um, something else I think we've never discussed, and I, I I wasn't thinking of discussing this, but I thought this would be a good moment as you were talking. Is that we both grew up uh, with a similar blessing i'll say for me it was a blessing uh grew up with dyslexia yeah not realizing um the hardship that it forced on me as a youngster and through life actually made me uh level up and become something much more successful than if i was uh able to read and write can you talk about that yeah um i'm i i knew i was dyslexic um not until i was like 40 some years old i was diagnosed and it, but what I, I can't even realize it's, there's great things that are really good. It's a brain difference. And the only thing we're not good at is reading and writing those letters. They kind of, they move around on us and it's not fair. We can't keep up with regular thinkers or straight thinkers. Uh, people who think linear, we kind of think out of the box. So we're really good at, you know, sculpting or art or material reasoning skill sets interconnected like tying one thing to the next we're really good at those skills and those are skills that people, most people don't have 
the narrative skill of a, a, of a storyteller, we're really good at that. And the dynamic coming up with really big ideas, we're really good at that. We hit home runs. We hardly hit, you know, we don't hit singles all the time. We just don't go like life like that. So when I was a young boy, I was put in remedial classes and um, they didn't know what was going on. They Is that a went, term for special ed? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And, and they put me in a, in a room with a bunch of people who didn't know, you know, had uh, all kind of learning differences. And uh, that made me feel really bad about myself. And I struggled and fought and I was like, I, I knew I wasn't, I knew, I knew nothing was wrong with me. But I couldn't, I couldn't spell correctly. I, they put me, when I had to stand up in front of the class, I remember, I remember going to the bathroom and actually peeing on myself so that I would be sent home so I wouldn't have to read in front of the class. That's how bad it was. So that shame carried on all the way through, so much so that the reason why I met you at Gold's Gym was because I was in college and I got to the place where I was like, I cannot get good i was getting c's i wanted to get better grades you have to get good grades and my my roommate was from africa he was from africa his th third or fourth language was uh english and i was like i gave him a textbook and i said can you read this and he read it just straight through no problem and i was like i can't do that <laughs> it's like <laughs> this is like i don't know what this is it feels like a whole different language to me and that's when i realized i wasn't going to do well i took one acting class and the, the part where I was going back and forth, it felt more, more, more me that I had a chance that I left college and I moved to Hollywood to become an actor, thinking I'd, I'd be better off doing that than anything else. You jumped. Yep. You jumped. You made the move. You did it. Yep. And then uh, um, life was great because you got to meet me. And yeah. um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, but it, it was great having you at Gold's in the early 90s like that because of the fact that Gold's then such icons that you and I got to train next to and with. And the list goes on and on of the people that we know. Um, we, could, we could talk forever about this. But from there, you could have easily. and And I. I I don't think the viewers understand this, but when they see the photos of you, you could have easily, and you did do the magazines, all types of magazines, um, because you had such an incredible body, posters, calendars, and so on and so forth, us doing all the landmark kind of fun gift cards and stuff. But that being said, well, I'll keep that out. Um, you could have got on stage back then or kind of gone that route, but you stayed with the acting. You stayed deep into the acting. And then suddenly I get a phone call <laughs> five and a half weeks ago, everybody, five and a half weeks. Yeah. Let me just clarify this because we're going to show some pictures of what you look like. I got more. Five I and a half weeks ago, he goes, hey, Mike, we're done filming the TV show. We're done with that. I'm back home. You're you're doing your thing. And, and then I get this call going, hey, I want to get on stage. Oh, I, uh, all right. I mean, at this stage of the game. Cause you're over 50 now, 53, 53. And you go, uh, there's a show in five and a half weeks. Uh, need your help. I said, done. Let's go. You said, let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't really mean it. It's, it's a bucket <laughs> thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm going, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, whatever he says, I'm going to do exactly like it. And you said, try to get close to hundred percent every single day. And that's what I, I I was set to do. Now there was a couple things that that when we were we were on the set that we talked about that really registered very strongly with me. One, during that time, I started dating Tanya Knight. If you remember, in American Gladiators, it was the whole period. not on set. This is years ago. This is years yeah, ago for everybody. Long, long 1990-91, I started dating Tanya Tanya Knight, and I was tra I trained with her at Gold's Gym, and uh, she was training for the Arnold's Classic. So I got to watch the whole preparation of a champion, like intricately, like, you know, really dedicated and it was mind boggling. And it was, it really taught me, I think what it need, what, what, what it would take to be a champion, not only just as a, you know, a bodybuilder, but like in life, like what the sacrifice that you had to do, because she was so, she had just tested uh, positive um, in another contest 
prior and they stripped her of her thing and she'd fallen all apart. And so she had to do this contest under that scrutiny. And she went out to like Ohio and she won. She won the Arnold's Classic. And when you guys at home, and I hope you do know the the legacy of bodybuilding and health and fitness. Tanya Knight was one of the biggest legends of uh, female bodybuilding. She was also an American gladiator. She was also just a great human being. Um, and she swooped you up. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. and she taught me a lot. And then she uh, she moved on in her life, and I moved on in my life. But th when, when you were on set, I did not know she had passed away. Yes. When, when you told yeah. me that, that just wrecked me because I'll always, you know, I moved on with my life and um, I mean, obviously we're 30 some years later and I just always wanted to, the training that she did and the diet and all that, it's always been part of like my, my life. And when that when i looked at the so so when i looked down at the calendar and it said this thing was in franklin tennessee on july 8th and it was five and a half weeks away i had all this these feelings inside and i thought i i'm i, I gotta i might see if mike will do this with me and i'll, I'll do anything he says so i did i committed to doing it not only for that and also because we were both uh friends with eric the trainer and last year eric uh took his own life and you know the stuff that kind of built my self-esteem brought me back to the world of my body and it was like all these things that i had to stand up for and it was right in line with my sixth year of sobriety it was the day after july 7th was my sobriety date and july 8th was a contest so with all that moving forward i said you know what i'll never get this chance again i'm going to go for it uh I, I, for me, this is a question I'm asking. Great, great wife and kids. Kids are, I think, tell Cam I said hello, but yeah. you got a, a great life, a great support crew around you. You got this new TV show coming out. So you you, you got a lot on the plate and, and things are really good. Um, you got your sobriety, six years. It's a whole, you're also at this age and state where, you want to be just around good people. You don't want the stress of life. You moved away from California. Stay with me on this. I know this is a, a little bit long, but you moved away from what's out here to somewhere more peaceful. I'm assuming that's the reason for the move and stuff. Um, so everything's great. Why the pressure? Why, why this added pressure of getting on stage in the bucket list and, and, and doing something like that and putting yourself out to... I guess to society is like, well, why would you do that? You got, you know, you got your money, your family, you got everything. Don't do that silly thing. That's silly. What, what was the, is there something that you can tell us that go, it's not about this, that, and the other thing. It was about Tanya, about, you know, talk to us. Tell, tell me why the jump, why would you do something like this instead of just saying casual and enjoying this TV show and the family? Why put yourself through it? I know. It's not easy. It's not easy. I didn't know how hard it would be. Um, I think that I just wanted to make that commitment to myself. I just wanted to make the commitment to kind of like what we were doing, like the energy that you brought to the set, like the accomplishment of getting you there and you doing, nailing the scenes, like everything was just moving forward. And I was just like, I sat still and I looked at my son and I, I know I have my own television series. He, people always say stuff to me in the street. Oh, my God, I know you from that movie. And I didn't want it to be about that. I wanted to be about this moment, you know, like fighting for this moment, you know, getting ready for this competition. And it, it that was what it was. I mean, he was like, he would hug me every day. He'd be like, Dad, you've got to drink all that water. Like, <laughs> You're seven? Oh, dad. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, hey, son, you know, I got to go do another cardio. Drunk on water. He goes, my, well, first off, the first thing I went, I, I got him in, interested in the contest. You know, he said, if you're going against Mike, you're going to lose. <laughs> that's my boy, Cam. <laughs> all right. All right. I was like, well, <laughs> that's not it, man. Yeah. 
yeah i think it was it was just to show my son man i don't take any day for any day for granted anymore in this world i just don't after what you know this this last with hearing about tanya what happened to eric i just thought i'm so grateful to be alive i want to be alive Oof. It'll be everything that I could be, and you sent me something. I, I, I don't. I, I'm not gonna be pulled up, but you, you were like, "It's a gift. You have this gift. Let's show it." Something like that. Like, like all along, man, you had this incredible gift. Let's 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 unwrap it, you know. And uh, I, I was dedicated to it. I I did what you said. If you are confused about training, do not worry. That's what the Titan training plan is for. For you guys to subscribe to this plan, you also get the additional coaching from me in the Titan private group. Get in there today, and I cannot wait to start working with you and making your dreams come true. Let's get back to the show. You, you're one of these people that's walking around out there that I think is, um, you've not you've you've had some serious struggles you've had some hardships you've gone through stuff you've had moments and correct me if i'm wrong where you didn't like yourself yeah. and and at this stage of the game you were like i need to do something like this to push myself and show my son uh what's possible and if you guys do, i gotta i don't know if we can show a picture of your family but wow it's mm -hmm. like uh it's a beautiful family the kids and it's just everybody. Um, it's cool that you as a father can talk to him and, and show your kids the struggles you've gone through and then still come out this side and then decide to do something as to maybe some people as silly as a contest, but it's not the contest. It really is the commitment, the dedication of going, I'm going to put myself through this battle and come out the other side. And if you guys don't know, he won. <laughs> so, you know, he decides to do a show at 53 years old. And in five and a half weeks, we we got this boy ready, walked on stage and crushed it. It's just a cool thing to watch and be part of because that's all I was. I, I got to and for, for my whole life that I've known you since we were teens, it's, I get to watch you live this life and, and the ups and downs and, and see where you are today. It's a cool it's a cool movie for me to watch you. Because I know so many people know you from the movies, but I get to call you a friend and watch your life, and it's it's a, a motivating thing to me. Yeah, so. I, I think that uh, I'm really. I hope that people get to see this and kind of see where we went because it was it was it was like climbing Mount Everest, really. Like there was a lot of things that could have got gone wrong, a lot of obstacles got in the way, and I could have turned and went the other way, and I didn't. You stayed true to the commitment. Absolutely true, man. I was like, I got to do it. And, you know, even like, even the little things with my wife, like, you got to be at the gym all day. <laughs> <laughs> like, Mike said, I got to do this. So <laughs> during the, during, I, during this five and a half weeks, it's not like you got to be a, a we call it a bodybuilding lifestyle. You got to be on the couch and the, and mama's fixing the meals and feeding you and you're doing nothing. I did um, all the meal prep. I cooked all my cod. All of it. Oh my God. And finally, I got the call from you and you go, Hey, I got to throw out the pitch at a game. So we're going to have to travel and do this and that. And I'm going to be yeah, gone for right. this week. And I go, okay, but I'm not going to change the plan to suit your <laughs> schedule. This yeah. is what you have to do this week. So it's fine. Get to the gym in the morning, get to the gym at night, stay on the meal plan, get your water in. I want no hiccups. Yeah. I had no idea we were going to kick into the gear like that. I had no idea. I was like, I gotta go throw out the first Cam Camden and me are going to throw out the first pitch. <laughs> and you're like, um, maybe you want to do it in August because <laughs> the contest is coming or, up. Or, oh man, it would have been great if you could have done it now because you could have popped the top, then throw it out and then flex right. your abs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. man. I, I absolutely love this. And I'm glad you got to take time today to talk to me about this. And I'm, I'm so happy about the show and about just the life you're living and the words that you're getting out to people about dyslexia, about growing up with that and, and the hardship. Do you feel that the hardship, well, for me, I think growing up, you found out much later than I did. Um, uh, I felt the hardships at that young age helped me in life. 
can you talk about the hardships and where you are today, especially this, this at the six year sobriety? All right. So, so in my life, there's a lot of, a lot of obstacles, right? Um, and in my sobriety, so uh, let me explain my sobriety. When I say I, I'm six years sober, in 2007, 2006, I went through a divorce, my first wife, and it, it broke my heart. I was shattered. I was not myself. I didn't know what to do with myself. I, I lost myself. And um, I started to really harm myself with drugs, alcohol, sex. I would numb myself, numb myself. But what was happening was these places in my life, these, these, these whys were coming up and they were crippling me. And I was making these decisions because of these whys. One of them, and one of the biggest ones that people don't realize, is a learning difference creates a, a great deal of shame because of the school system and the way that you and I, when we, we, we talk about dyslexia, it's like it hurts because it, it caused us a lot of harm throughout the school system. When people tell you dumb, it, it doesn't feel good because when you feel dumb and then someone tells you dumb and then they fail you or they, they put you in a remedial class, it, it, it destroys you. It destroys your self-esteem. You have to, you can overcompensate it in another way, which you and I both were able to do. Not everyone's able to do that. Shame yeah. is a very, very powerful thing. So in my life, that was one of the biggest things. Another very, very big thing that was a why was my father struggled very hard with his mental um, his mental health. And when he was 16 years old, my mom left my father and he was devastated. And I was with him at the time and he went through such a depressed state that he tried to commit suicide. And I was there, I had been lifting weights and I was strong enough and big enough to hold him down so that he wouldn't do it. He was a police officer and he was going for his service revolver. And that's how intense that moment got in my life. And I'm able to talk about all these things because in the sobriety that I talk about, it's a, it's a sobriety of shame. So I don't allow shame to control my life anymore. I talk all these things and put them into the light so that I'm not crippled by them anymore. The trauma of that experience doesn't have any weight. Um, and I know a lot of people go through very similar things in life and it's maybe triggering and if they need help, they can reach out to me. Um, there's, I work with um, many organizations, men's organizations that, you know, help um, the same issues. So those two things. Um, and then the other one, right after my very first screen test in, um, in the movies was with, uh, I, they flew me to Rome in Cina Città, and I screen tested for Franco Zeffirelli. It was a real big deal. And I was the biggest thing ever, but Franco decided in his craziness of which Franco Zeffirelli is everyone's starting to come to realize he entered my room in the middle of the night in my hotel room and he, he molested me when I was sleeping. And I had no idea that that had caused me so much trauma because in my recovery and in my the brain spotting and the EDMR that I did, I learned that the violence that I didn't that I held back was the thing that was crippling me in those moments of my biggest despair. So when I was heartbroken, I felt horrible about myself. I, everything that anyone could ever say about me, like, why didn't you kick his ass? Why I said all that stuff to myself. And then I started to harm myself by drugs, alcohol, and sex. And so when I have six years of sobriety, it's all about those aspects of shame that I've no longer allowed to take take control of my life to, to lead me to to do the next thing so that's that's the six years so, there's a there's a great saying that says i hope you become strong enough to where you can be kind or gentle and and, and you're at that stage where uh you're strong enough to where um that's not that hate and anger anymore you're calm um, a controlled rage, I guess you could say, even maybe for some people. I know that I, that's for me is a controlled rage where I try to forgive whatever mistakes I made through my life um, or, or things I feel I could have done different. Um, yeah, I'm able to hug the cactus. Yeah, that, that was a great, that's a great statement, right? Yeah, right. That's a, that, that, that video, um, speaking yeah. of that, it's like the whole pay it forward, hug the cactus. Um, that's a great thing. 
So, Man, so the go. one thing, you know, to this contest, before I would have had a, a list of things that other things that I was doing that would get in the way. And so when this opportunity came up and you were in my life in such a big way, I just thought, what a great thing to do. Let's see if we could do this. And you were jump when you jumped on it. You know, there's a part of me was like, it's a bucket list thing. You know, I didn't think I'd really go. I mean, I, I'm not. A, I can't do that. I did it though, man. I got up on that stage. I didn't know how to pose. Oh my god, my work. Yeah, I guess that's one of the biggest things. It's like, uh, you weren't ready five and a half weeks out, but you're like, shoot, let's just do this. I don't care what. I don't care if I fumble. I don't care if I make a, a fool of myself. I'm doing this and I'm giving it everything. Um, what can you say to people that are watching today, uh, young and old, about jumping, about um, those minute things that set you up? You leaving uh, Baltimore, right? right. And, and moving out there to Venice. Um, the commitment to your craft of acting. You're, you're jumping into this show at 53 years old. It's like it goes back to that thing that we've talked about is life's a gift freaking do it and do it now. Yeah. You know, and those windows are open very in a very short span of time. I, I, the opportunities aren't always going to be there and you've got to be in the right place in, 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 in mind, body and spirit for those doors to open. So when I, when I made the big leap to California, I was in that spirit. I was in there. So I found my way. I found my people. I found you, I found, you know, I found Tanya, I found what I was supposed to do because I was open to that. And it was whole, whole, I was, it was, I was blissfully on my journey. And then I came along um, and got fractured in a couple spaces. And that was, Franco was one of them. Um, it, and it didn't destroy my life. I kept fighting, you know, but it was something that trauma is a time traveler. So it, it came back and bit me in the ass. And it kept me from taking really big, great opportunities. And I, not to say I, I had, I don't look back at my life and ever have any regrets anymore because of my sobriety and my recovery, because I, I actually embrace all those things now that have happened to me or and that I had done. Um, but to leap forward, to have one thing, the most important thing that you and I know, courage, to find the courage to do so. To, and also not to have any expectations. If I would have lost this contest, I still would have won, right? Just by doing it, just taking on this incredible challenge at the age of 53 years old with two little kids, you know, and a wife and, and Nashville, Tennessee. I think I, I hope that people realize that. I, uh, it's nice that you won. <laughs> it's nice that, what, you know, that I got to help you and take you to that. And, and, and that you are willing to put in that work and that you did do this. Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope they realize that it didn't matter that you won or didn't win, is that I have you on here today. It's that there's such a beautiful journey within you that everything was not roses. I was absolutely not even the case. And a lot of people do get hurt. And, and like you and I have talked about, we have known so many through yours and my life that we've lost and tomorrow is promised to no one, regardless of your age. And that's the that's the one thing that I'm I'm blessed that I'm an old father. And, and the one thing that it's always said to me is, ah, you should have done it when you were younger. It's like, but well, life doesn't work that way. You know, I'm glad I got to do and be a father right now. And then I'm gonna spend as much time with my son and 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 try to teach him as best I can at the age that I'm at. Um, but Jumping and, and doing something like the show just kind of shows me again who you are as a person. Um, that you're absolutely as crazy as I am. A couple of dyslexic guys <laughs> that, <Yeah. laughs> that that's that's absolutely cool. living yeah. it right now. Thinking out still, of the box always and always, always out of the box. Always going for that home run, baby. Yeah. So if anybody's out there and you are dealing with something like dyslexia, reach out to Jonathan. Um, he works with a lot of organizations and, and he's really a forefront of this. Um, the cool thing about dyslexia is it does teach us how we have to comprehend and put things together without the ability to read and write. Uh, so it does help one aspect of us. Um, 
So <laughs> that's our superpower. It uh, is. But it, you got so much wisdom to teach and, and so much compassion when I think of you. Is There's a lot of compassion and uh, uh, no, there's no motive with you. You just are a fun-loving guy that's very kind to people and open. The only thing I'm concerned, this is I'm very concerned about this. We have a friend, Frank Carrillo, and, and Frank is an absolute savage, a beast. This body is like a Greek god. Um, is he concerned now that you're going to be casting up against him with your body? Because <laughs> I need to see a shirtless shot with you and Frank now. Um, have you talked to Frank after this show? Uh, well, you know, I called him. I called him Friday and I thanked him for helping me with my recovery because he was instrumental in my six years. I can't even tell you, you know, you guys being my friends and me being outspoken the way I've been outspoken, it made the, it made my world to have you guys be like, oh, cool, man. You know, like. We're not going to judge you, bro. You're still here. You're with us. Keep going. This is great. You're strong. And um, so I called him on my my sixth, you know, my, my on Friday, and I was just I, I thanked him for being a big brother. Really, you know, he's he he helped me in so many ways. I mean, he went out of his way to be there for me, and open armed, and just embraced me through the whole process. In the last six years of me moving out the Cal, moving out to Nashville from California, that's a big deal. Yeah. I was like, Frank, I don't have it, you know. I I got a handful of people that I can really trust, uh, and I, I don't know if I how am I going to feed my family? <laughs> you know, like, this is serious shit. And he right. took on. He was right there all along. So he was. I think he. I don't. He he's just, he knows I work really hard. He knows he knows how hard. Oh yeah, that's, that's not a good question. Yeah. Even the way the the cuts and everything came out, he's probably like, "Oh my God, how did they? Jeez, Jonathan, how did you accomplish that with a, a three year old? You know? Wow. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I, we we got a uh, our 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 circle of friends are pretty badass. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's a it's a we're lucky. Yeah, we're lucky. We got together for dinner that one time on a full moon. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow! And then, wow. can you imagine that table? Who was all at that table? <laughs> if somebody came in talking smack, <laughs> oof, oof. <laughs> there was there was too many multi-time black belt jujitsu boys and everybody with us. Yeah. What a crew! Um, Jonathan, thank you so much for doing this tag. I'm I going to keep you. Uh, I'd keep you on here forever and ever. Again, I think this for anybody that's watching it, regardless of your age, um, go follow. Uh, send him a DM. He does respond. Um, and and just there's, there's so many good things about you that the world doesn't get to see. And I really wanted to put you here on, on some kind of platform that I have to share to the world because what you're doing is something that means something to me about our brotherhood of dyslexia, uh, of, of being on this long journey together and uh, chasing the passion of your acting and now you jumped on stage. Oh, my gosh. Next thing you know, I'm going to get a call. Hey, I'm going to Masters Nationals, and I want to win that. Okay. Oh, my God. We had a lot of – I've learned so much, Mike. I, like, everything you said to me, I was just like – I looked in the mirror, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Once you got me down to – I was like, all the injuries from years, like, oh, my God, how can I train around that injury to get that shoulder around? Or, like, all those things, the lower ab, like, I had to bring that up and get it more defined. I was like – God, that's like training. Like that would take months to change that. Um, yeah, it was great. It was, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Is. And you're somebody that, again, you're somebody that's been in the gym since you were a teenager. But uh, I guess that's the lucky thing that I got to share with you is is my craft of really yeah, in five you, and a half weeks. It was all your understanding of the body. And none of those kids, none of those human beings that were on that stage had that, had that wisdom. N none of them. They looked great, but they weren't, they didn't have what I had. And that was my, that was my advantage was I had you. And that was the reason I won. 
because they all look great. They all look great, but there was just this different level. And you could see it in the judges. They were, whoa, how did he do that? Like, so yeah, it was, and, and, and I know that it had everything to do with your, your, your experience with like water, <laughs> cod, <laughs> dandelion root. I was like, oh my, well, you told me to take dandelion root. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> what is this about? Man. Oh, had to go to the store and buy it. Oh my God, it's great. I, I just realized you did watch our episode, uh, and and you sent me some screenshots, and you liked it. You loved it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, with with Max. Yeah. Oh, that was fantastic, man. That was so much fun. We were on the set of Blue Ridge, and Max Martini came out while while Mike. Both of them were on the same episode, which is going to be a fantastic. I saw it. It's fantastic. I can't wait to people get to see the series. It's going to be so good. People are going to love it. It's just a lot of fun. It's a family show. I watched it with Camden, who's who's nine, um, and my father, who's 83. They both loved it. Um, that's the kind of show it is. That's the kind of show I want to put on the air right now in this part of my life. And, and I love that about the show. Yeah. It, 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 you and Gary, it represents the family values that you guys believe in. And I saw that. And then I freaking loved having Max because I filmed with Max before, um, but he was the director. And so it was nice to be able to be on screen with Max. Yeah, you guys did some really powerful stuff on screen. Uh, it's fun, man. Just so much fun. That's what we're doing, man. We're having fun. Thank you, brother, for today. Thank you. Have a great day. And we will see him again. And I'll put all the information for you guys at home to get a hold of this stud. Give the family my best, too. Yeah, I can't wait to see you, man. Uh, hopefully, I'll be coming out there in August. Um, Good. Good, because we might be out there as well. Ashton? Yeah, we're going to come out and train with you and Gunner. Oh, that's a great idea. Right? Yeah. I mean, you got that whole gym. Why not? Oh, my God. This is crazy. Right? <laughs> How's Gunner here? <laughs> yeah, right? I love you, kid. I love you, I'll too, talk man. soon. Okay. Bye, buddy. Yeah. Good cat. Good cat. Man. Um, Go back, save this, send this to a friend. I think you guys, uh, with this show, I know you guys are health and fitness people, but uh, to stay in health and fitness, you're going to have to have that outside life that you um, kind of control the best you possibly can with the ups and downs. And I think that's uh, all of us go through life and it's not easy uh, and we do hit the low parts. Um, but if you got a great circle of, around you that can lift you up, like he was talking about. Um, and then he, you find that second, that, that second level. And this happened for me becoming a father too, is like, like the jump of going, Hey, I want my son to see me be dedicated and committed and hold to my word on doing something. So again, share this video, this show to uh, somebody that may be having a hardship right now or, or dealing with things. And then also show this to somebody that may be thinking, uh, hey, you know what? It's time to jump and get on stage for the first time. What's the worst that can happen? You get in shape, you you, you become a different person in, in five and a half or 12 weeks. I'm not going to say you're going to get in shape in five and a half weeks like this superstar, but you will get in shape in time. And uh, that does help the mind. So that's it. This is the Mike O'Hearn Show. We will see you next week. And again, thank you everybody for... Hanging out.